Right. I think I say that every week, don't I? Right. Uh, it's probably just like that first bit of nerves that I need to get out of the way. Today, today's drink is actually a Prosecco, another Audi finest, because I've got a couple of shout outs, a couple of, um, yeah, a couple of pieces of shouting out that I want to do. Um, first, first shout out is to my brother-in-law, Will Hooper, whose music video for Dua Lipa, casual, featuring Missy Elliott and Madonna came out at the end of last week and it's bloody great so if you haven't seen it it's probably best to just look on Dua Lipa's profile because it will be there um yeah if you have seen it then watch it again so congratulations Will did I say it was Will Hooper? Will Hooper mm. and my other oh look there he is just commented that guy Will Hooper there with the underscores um the other little shout out is for my film tomorrow, which comes out in the, uh, America, Tracks. You'll be able to watch it on things that I should have remembered or looked at researching before I decided to do these shout outs. Um, cheers. Yes. Welcome. Uh, so yeah, it comes out in America tomorrow. It's a comedy. We filmed it across Europe. And if you need a good laugh at the moment, which lots of people do, let's face it, uh, give it a shout out. And I think one of the things that lots of filmmakers are finding at the moment is that you were just not being able to watch our films with an audience in a cinema or at festivals. So if you do give it a watch, let me know and let me know what you think about it. Because, um, you know, part of what we're doing here is trying to get people to interact with us and give us some feedback. So that's Tracks. That's Will Hooper. Let's get to tonight's show. We're here at number seven, which means I've been doing this for seven weeks. That is crazy. Thank you for watching it, everyone. It's, um, yeah, it's, oh, will we be able to watch it in the UK? Yes, Trax is coming to the UK at uh, the end of September, beginning of October, but I'll get, I'll get all of that info um, nearer the time. Uh, so tonight's episode, I am very excited to um, introduce Tara Alicia Berry. Um, I can see she's waiting, but I'm gonna do her, her little introduction now so she doesn't get too embarrassed. I had the great pleasure of meeting Tara. I say meeting in the kind of COVID sense that we did like a Zoom session and now I've met her. Um, and also that we've shared the screen for eight episodes um, in a web series that we did called Disconnected. Um, and it was a kind of an attempt by the crazy Anton Lanes and Matthew Lutweiler in LA to bring creatives together from across the world um, during the height of the coronavirus pandemic. And we did it. And uh, Tara and her amazingly talented family and friends and everyone who was over in India clubbed together and um, created some of the most amazing bits of filmmaking and uh, Tara's performance in particular in Disconnected is so amazing and um, nuanced and we we wrote, I say we because I was part of the um, writing team on Disconnected, uh, a very modern and challenging storyline for her and she took it on and is amazing. So um, if you get a chance to, to check that out if you're in the UK or in the US, that is on YouTube. Um, I'm gonna in, I'm gonna get her in now. Here she comes. So, first of all, she stayed up late because it's half eleven in India. Um, but imagine that we're we're. Uh, oh my God! Welcome to Brighton. Thank you. I wish I was actually there, but I know. this is still amazing. This Thank will you do. so much. You're welcome, everybody. This is Tara. Welcome to my channel. Um, let me finish your intro. Thank you. So Tara Alicia Berry is an Indian actor who studied film production and screenwriting at Chapman University in Los Angeles. Uh, she first gained recognition for her role in Stories by Rabindra Tagore and later established herself as a diverse actor through the crit critically and commercially acclaimed web series Love, Lust and Confusion, which is sort of what we're here to talk about and the character of Paroma Sakar that um, yes. Tara gets recognised for the most. 
uh, and then later to State of Siege, which did that come out this year? Was it this yes. Year? State of yes. Siege, yeah, on Z5 and, and was one of the biggest viewed shows I think the channel had ever had, is that right? Yes. Yeah, so she's a big deal, everyone. Um, she's a multilingual actor and her work spans across the Indian industries, including Hindi, Tamil, Telugu, and Bengali film and te television industries. And she's here on my channel. Well, thank welcome. you. Hi, thank Tara. You for, hi. Uh, I thank you for not um, bringing me on during the introduction. <laughs> That's okay. That's okay. I, I knew dying. you were going to get embarrassed. I was dying anyway. I was like, oh no. <laughs> I felt like everyone could see me. I'm like, oh shit, what she's saying? No, no, but no, thank you so much. We can oh, all see you now, though, just FYI. We can, we're all seeing you now. <laughs> Firstly, thank you. Thank you so much. April, I can't believe that. Uh, I mean, I'm a huge fan of some of the people that you've interviewed and you as well. So to be on this show is just a dream come true. Oh, uh, thank you. And yeah, I've just been literally like, I, I, firstly, I can't believe you asked me. And secondly, I've just been waiting for it since you asked me. <laughs> and talking to my partner, Umang, about it. What am I going to say if she asks me this? What am I going to say if she asks me that? Like, oh God, I've just... Yeah, Don't so worry, I've got some. So I've got some. I've got some really good questions for you, so it should be okay. Should be. No, okay. but thank you and congratulations. I'm dying to see tracks and oh. uh, yeah. So and I've got some rosé here. So Cheers, congratulations girl. and congratulations to your brother-in-law as well. That's huge. Mm -hmm. Oh my mm -hmm. god, I didn't know this. I'm gonna go after we finish and watch the video. Do it's it's really it's it's a very good one. The visuals are stunning. The idea is amazing. Like she looks obviously amazing. He's just done a great job. So you can be creative in lockdown. See, yeah. all of us are proof of that. We are. We are. It's true. So Tara, um, for I would say probably the majority of my followers um, who don't know you, who haven't been yes. exposed to your work, um, yes. can you talk a little bit first of all about how you got into acting? and how you kind of decided it was the career path that you wanted and how you kind of got from that decision to your kind of first job, I guess. So um, I actually realized that I want to be a part of the film industry in some uh, department or the other when I was about 15. And at that time, I was going through a, quite a rough time personally uh, and wanted to drop out of school and start, yeah, and uh, start working as uh, in the film industry. Uh, but my uh, mom was very against that idea and sort of, you know, said at least finish your education uh, till, you know, 12th and then see what you want to do. And so then I, I, I finished, uh, you know, my international baccalaureate and then uh, everyone at that time was like, no, 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 you know, you must go to college and uh, study. So luckily at the time, uh, you know, film schools and things had just started at least in, started being a thing that was acceptable. Uh, in, uh, I, I don't know, within my group or whatever it was at, at that time. And uh, so luckily my, my, my father who, uh, was going to be paying for my education, he uh, agreed to send me to film school, uh, which was a huge deal because, um, you know, a, a, a Indian father allowing their child to do something in the creative field or whatever is a big deal. Um, he, of course, yeah. was completely against the idea of me becoming, I mean, getting into acting and wanted me to write and direct. Uh, which I honestly do not have the temperament for at all. <laughs> Writing I love, yeah, but direction I think I would just be like, I don't think I have the temperament to direct at all. Uh -huh, uh -huh. Um, but anyway, so went to film school and then uh, I did a method acting course in my um, uh, in my syllabus and I absolutely knew at that point that, that this is what I should be doing. There's nothing mm -hmm. that... You know, I can I can't wake up every morning and do something other than this. Uh, you know, I just won't I just won't be happy. Um, right. And um, so I I actually dropped out and I came back to India, joined another acting school here, uh, then uh, got my first job in casting. 
uh, <laughs> and then and then did that for 9 months learned a lot about how to audition and things here from the other and, side of the couch yeah, as well from the other side exactly which was i think like being in film school in itself uh and uh, did that job finally finished because the lady who i was working for she knew i wanted to act mm-hmm. and uh, i stopped i i i didn't quit but my 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 contract with her ended or whatever and i got my first job in a telugu film in the south and i didn't speak the language so i was like you know what am i going to do and i was very lucky because i had um you know my my director my dop everybody surrounding me spoke the language and they all really helped me sort of get used to speaking uh you know my dialogues in a new language that i had never spoken before so how did you and, did, how did you learn it did you did they at that time honestly like at that time i just mugged it like i just yeah why well, i didn't have a choice because it wow. was my first job yeah it was my first job and honestly i was it was frightening and luckily yeah. luckily yeah, i was really lucky because it was an ensemble cast so all the pressure wasn't just uh, i had a lot of time uh, on set to learn my lines and get them right and and also you know learn the meaning of what i was saying mm. uh, first and foremost you know yeah um so they would give me the meaning as well as the uh the meaning of the dialogues as well as the telugu dialogues as well as the translation because uh, a, how you say something is so important as well like it's if so you're saying important. i hate you that doesn't really work does it <laughs> yeah exactly um and the thing is here a lot of films now things have changed but sync sound came a lot later in into our industry like we were still going the old school route of oh, dubbing oh wow okay yeah a lot of films and things are still dubbed so out of all the work that i've done i think i've worked in two or three sing sound projects and that's it wow all the other work i've done we've had to do dubbing after the so project just over. let's just let's just you know assume that some people might not know what you mean what i mean so, so basically that means on set you're mic'd up and you're saying your dialogue which are being recorded but then after the shoot is complete uh before folly and premixing i don't know if anyone knows our post production but before all of that you have to go in and redo all your dialogues uh which are then recorded by a sound and engineer uh and then placed in lip sync to what you're saying which is wow so why are you performing the whole thing again but why i have no idea i really you know i think uh in india i i guess some people felt that it helped you sort of enhance your performance uh okay. like i've heard so many people say that you know if you've screwed up a scene or something you can really make a difference with you know dubbing uh but having said that like now i know like in the other projects that i've done which where we've had sync sound uh we only dub the dialogues where there's like suddenly like rain in the background mm-hmm. or there's some mm-hmm. external noise Yeah because frankly like as an actor uh when you're on set in that moment in being that person nothing can beat that pure emotion uh no matter what you're tapping into when you're dubbing mm. you know uh and so many times i feel that it takes away from it takes away from the truth of that moment but also at times i have felt and i know that i've come back from like a dubbing session and said this to my you know friends and family that i i really feel like you know a, a particular scene that i've completely botched when i was acting on set <laughs> i've been able to kind of manage it somehow uh, in dubbing but i still believe that i i hope that as an industry we veer towards sync sound and slowly you know only have sync sound versus mm. uh, having to dub it's i mean it's something that i have never experienced we would only ever re-record something or dub something when it went wrong when it was yeah. like you say like if it was raining or if a car went past or if there was maybe something that it would be occasional maybe it's just because yes. i'm so good live but you know <laughs> <laughs> but if a performance needed to be tweaked slightly or if it wasn't quite the right emphasis on a line 
Um, so yeah. that's, yeah, that's, that's crazy. But you, so you, so your first job was in a language that you didn't speak. Yeah. And, and now you speak, do you speak that language now or? So it was very funny because my first two jobs were in a language that I didn't speak. And by the time I started learning that language and getting comfortable with the language, I got work in the Hindi film industry and I'm very comfortable in Hindi. Uh, so I, that was kind of like my first, first job where I was in command of what I was doing versus, right. you know, it's very difficult when you're working in a, in a, in a project, which is not in a language that you're super comfortable with because 90% of your attention is on trying actually to get the words like right. trying to get, yeah, your, the words right. Mm -hmm. And so I feel like when you're on set, you're obviously, I mean, you're in a scene, you're, you're there and you're emotionally there, but your prep time is all going into your dialogue. And yeah. like now, like if I'm, if I'm working on a project where I, I, I'm comfortable with the language, I'm not really thinking about what I'm saying or what I need, you know, I'm just there. I'm the person yeah. I'm supposed to be versus trying to think about what I'm saying. You're doing so, what you learn in your method acting course. Yeah. <laughs> Which is, Hopefully. I guess, yeah. <laughs> Hopefully. Um, Hopefully. I don't know if I'm doing that. But... Well, I can, I, yeah, I mean, I can't. Obviously, I'm sitting here speaking to you in English in my mother tongue and your English is better than mine. So it's, it's an embarrassment, honestly. That's, um, that's not true. <laughs> <laughs> so, so when, if, we, if we move on to Love, Lust and Confusion, um, yes. where did that come in the kind of canon of your work? So how, like how many jobs had you done before landing that role? I had done a, a fair number of jobs. Okay. Um, a couple of films and uh, a web series. Okay. And um, I honestly, when it was offered to me initially, I, I really wasn't very sure about it because my debut film in the Hindi film industry was rather controversial. It was a story about India's first soft porn writer. Uh, who became so famous because all these kids in North India, you know, used to buy his uh, uh, novels and read them in, host in, the, in hostels. And he was just, I mean, super, super famous and nobody knew his story. And this was a film talking about, uh, you know, his story. And I got a lot of flack for, I played his wife who didn't mm -hmm. know in the story that he was writing porn and, 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 okay. uh, and things. And, What's the film uh, called, please? The film is called Mastram. Yeah. And now it's been turned into a web series. And ah, a web series and that's the one, it's out that, now, right? Yeah, that's out now. Wow. And that's doing really well. And again, like uh, the web series has done really well. I'm really, really happy because uh, the film did well critically, but I think a lot of people sort of then just, typecast me and started you okay. know, calling me for roles which uh, had like a lot of sex or a lot of even though the film had nothing to do with sex and nothing to do with anything you yeah. know uh, you know how the industry is I don't know how it is uh, there but mm -hmm. it's very easy to get typecast here well I think here. also it's it's I guess in my experience it was kind of well the assumption that if you're okay with that subject matter, then that must be something that you're, you know, that yeah. we can throw anything at you and you must be okay with it. Right. Yeah. So I yeah. think also I kind of, obviously I was doing some research as I like to do. My viewers will know that I like to do a bit of research. And uh, I think I, whilst I was, whilst I was looking specifically at love, lust and confusion, I was, I was kind of surprised by how many parallels there are with my experience in, in a show called Skins. Yes. And, and then I kind of thought, well, this looks like I planned it. I actually wanted to talk to you because you're you. And then I realized that our, our joint experience in a show like Love, Lust and Confusion and Skins, actually, you know, I, I, I've put in here just for the fans who, who and, and viewers who might not know about the show, Love, Lust and Confusion is the perfect depiction of the age of indecisiveness, age of physical exploration and age of confusion. And the show also explores the element of polyamory and depicts the perspective of youngsters towards it. Now, if you can't see the parallels there between that and Skins, then I don't know. 
So we've actually got more in common than I even ever thought we did. And I think how, yeah. how fascinating to talk to you about what that was like for you with the kind of knowledge of how it, I was experiencing it here in England. Yes, but you know, Skins actually came out at a time where there was no show that had, uh, you know, the depiction of teenagers actually going through the shit we went through when we were yeah. teenagers. Yeah. You know, like everybody's gone through that and there was never a show that uh, until Skins that actually showed, uh, you know, the the grief and... and um, I think inner turmoil that teenagers go through at that yeah. time. You're yeah. going through so many things and everyone has a tough time at that age, you know. Mm -hmm. uh, and um, loveless and confusion because it's come out at a time where there has been so much out there, including skins on television that people have seen all over the world. I mean, skins is a global, globally loved, uh, you know, show. Yeah. And uh, um, people have already seen, we're, well, we were really lucky because people have already seen, you know, skins, people have seen, uh, you know, other shows that have, that have come out, which have these, uh, you know, which, which depict women and men at a certain age, exploring their sexuality, exploring their interests, exploring themselves in ways which are now uh, more acceptable and I say mm. acceptable because you know they're not so acceptable but acceptable yeah uh, yeah um, and I'm lucky that Love, Lust and Confusion came out after people had seen you know it shows like skins and things like that because right. I didn't get as much even though I do still get asked by so many people I get so many messages even now uh, because Love, Lust and Confusion again it shows our director wanted to just show, you know, young people today. So there's right. a lot of, um, there, there's so many, uh, you know, um, scenes where uh, characters are intimate with each other, characters are, are drinking or smoking or doing this and that. And in Indian shows, it's like blasphemous, you know, right. uh, which is really very frustrating. Uh -huh. um, for me as an Indian actor, as well as I know for so many directors that I've worked with, because that's life. If yeah. you can't depict reality uh, on screen, um, you know, then that's what every filmmaker, a lot of filmmakers want to do. But you were um, saying, so you were saying I still get lots of messages and then you kind of... Yeah, you, said, you, like, sorry, sorry. I'm, you you went I, off on a tangent. It's fine because I was loving it. But like, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I still get lots of messages about why did you do this and you know why did oh, you do that? Oh, negative. Yeah, comments. negative messages like, oh, why did you do? You know, why have you done Mastra on the web series again? Like, why did you do this sex scene in this show? And why did you do this? And you know, but I obviously I'm doing work that I believe in. Right. And I think. Every uh, creative person, whether they're an actor, a filmmaker, a musician, any kind of artist um, has the liberty to do what they believe in. Yeah. And I'm really yeah. lucky to have gotten jobs that I really love and believe in. And so you feel empowered in those roles. You don't feel like you're exploited in any way or you don't feel like, you know, you're, you're doing something because it's expected of Tara Alicia Berry because she's saucy and she's salacious and all of that you d I mean I guess there's so many questions later on about your ideal role but I suppose that kind of weaves into this now is you know for me personally I didn't want to be seen as the sexy one the one who had lots of boyfriends or looked shaggable or whatever because I felt like uh, I, I guess as I've talked about my experience wasn't that positive whereas it sounds like you felt empowered from the people around you perhaps or that you felt like you were doing something you believed in which I think is a very different maybe a different starting point than I had yes I think initially uh in between my career I felt oh no you know now I'm gonna say just before love Lust, and confusion I'm gonna say no to all parts that you know uh, portray me in this manner yeah okay uh as someone shaggable uh, yeah. As Michelle so nicely says, <laughs> and I can't remember which episode it's in. Uh, but your but Michelle is telling her friend who plays the clarinet that you know that's my job. 
I've sorry, yeah. forgotten that character's name. But yeah. um, uh, yes. Uh, oh yeah, Jalandar. Yeah. I forgot. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, so yeah. So sh- so um, I actually di- told my manager. I was like, listen, if any parts come to you for me, which have any, you know, sex Nudity. or making out, anything of the sort, mm-hmm. uh, I'm just just tell them no. Sorry, you know. Um, yeah. But then Loveless and Confusion came, and luckily my director uh, insisted on meeting me because when the casting person called and said and and told me the narration, I was like, hey, you know, listen, I really don't want to be part of something like this. Like it's it's something that I'm trying to stay away from because I've been typecast and I yeah. just don't want to do this kind of uh, you know role. And luckily. Um, my director asked for a meeting, and I met him. And you know, he was just—I mean, his idea about what he wanted to portray was exactly the kind of work that I want to be doing. Yeah, and I'm just so grateful because, frankly, it was—it was a gift. Today, yeah. I have people, you know, as I said to you, like people come up to you and say, "Listen, I, I am Michelle from Skins," uh-huh. and till now, I have people who are like. Poro, like they won't even come and say like you know they just be like poro and yeah. So and, many people just in the chat have been saying like such an important part for me, some such an important moment in my life. It feels like in the same way that perhaps our characters in Skins had an impact on people when they were younger and they were seeing themselves reflected on screen, perhaps yeah. for the first time. It feels like that actually is something that you gave to people in your country and across like the rest of India it feels like something perhaps brave that you that you took on and and people are appreciative of i mean april honestly i really i mean i thank you for saying that but it's really the makers you know it's right. the makers who were brave because okay. they i i really believe that today they really took a chance with this story and mm-hmm. and uh, i know how much they fought for the story to be told you know and how many years they worked on it till yeah. finally they got it together to tell it and uh, kudos to them kudos to our director and writer because uh, if if it weren't for his perseverance and passion the show would have never been made and we would have never had a season 2 and it's just and i'm so so grateful that women men girls boys i've had people of all ages come up to me and say that they felt liberated watching poroma's story and other mm-hmm. character stories just like i'm sure people did when they watched skins you know yeah. it's just nice to see non judgmental depiction of reality on film mm-hmm. whether it's in a web series or a you know whatever platform it is it's so lovely like i know how i feel when i see uh, a maker showing characters in a non judgmental manner mm. and you you actually fall in love with those people you know yeah yeah it's I so think, lovely so when when that when you were in the show when it was coming out when it was first being seen by people what was the reaction of the people around you because i think that was something i mean you're like your nearest and dearest because that was something i discussed on my first episode and i think it's really interesting when we you know we've just been talking about all of the positives and the the you know the the great impact that you had on people you don't know what was the impact for people you do know i think uh honestly uh my the the people i have very few friends and very few people uh in my life um who are close to me and all of them have been very very supportive no matter what i've done okay uh you know and they've also um been critical where it's due but yeah. with lovelas and confusion i think like my mom uh, my agent manager who's also a very close friend my other close friends they were just really really proud and very very happy that um you know there was something out there that finally that i was a part of that had commercial and critical success because something like that is very rare you don't know what work is going to do well you know mm. and um yeah i think they just felt very proud that's and do you feel do you feel like that is rare is that something that you expected is it because i feel like you know in my 
Western mind of what an Indian family might think of as suitable or unsuitable. I think, God, Tara was, you know, she must have had a really supportive family around her to do that kind of thing. And, you know, to be seen playing those sorts of characters. Is that just my biased and uneducated opinion? Or is or are you a rarity and were you really lucky? Honestly, like with mum, it's always been like, she's always supported me. Yes, there have been, there have been. Is that, do you think because she's also a performer? Because she's also a model and, and you know, like. I think. Does she lo- think, is she living vicariously through you? I love you know, Nandini, by the way. This is also <laughs> No, no, no. You know what? I think with mum, it's just that she knows that I'm going to do what I want. <laughs> I honestly like. I, so I she may as well support you because you're going to do it anyway. Yeah, oh, yeah. I think I, I have never ever, uh, you know, I don't think I've ever listened to anyone. Uh, you know, uh, girl. Yeah. As good. Horrible as that no. Why are you no. apologizing for that? But, That's amazing. What an no, amazing but, thing to say. Are you listening but, out there, this girl? No, it's not always a good thing. But uh, no, I think that she she's always supported me. Like, there, if there's ever anything that I've done where there have been a few things where she's like, you know, uh, she's felt like I know that she's felt like, oh, why did she do that? Like. I know that there was a, a a shot of me in my bra in one of the the films that I had done, and I know that she was a little like, you know, like, why did you do that? Or, mm. You know, but but I know I know for a fact that I, I did tell her off about it. <laughs> and then, yeah, because I was comfortable. So yeah. isn't that the fact? Isn't that? great you know yeah I, don't know. I mean that's yeah. I guess that's one of my questions as well is when you when you search your name in our google there are so many photos of you that are yeah. stunning by the way but they're all quite suggestive they're all quite alluring you're scantily clad in like you're not wearing a lot of clothes in some of them is that like is that something you feel comfortable doing are you proud of your incredible beauty and body because of course you should be but like that for me I you know I would feel I guess embarrassed or uh maybe underconfident to do that kind of shoot and it feels like I mean I don't know whether it's just my internet pulling down those kind of photos of you but it no, does no, feel like no 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 you know the thing is that uh initially when that did happen I had spoken to my manager at that time and I was very upset you know that why are these the only photos that are coming up and yeah uh you know and and it, it was at that time like upsetting for me I think I was also young yeah uh, you know like 22 23 and honestly like at that age you're I guess to a certain degree you do feel a lot more embarrassed and a lot you know more sensitive Mm. Uh, but as the years have gone by honestly like maybe today I wouldn't feel so comfortable maybe uh, doing some of the wearing some of the clothes and playing uh, some of the parts that I have in the past but at that time I believed in them and today I don't feel I mean I just feel like so what like you know I did I I did this song in one film which had which had me in my bra for half the song and making out with this guy through the other 90% of the song and (laughs) at that time I believed in it you know I thought yeah yeah it was a fantastic part it was a part of this woman who was in an abusive marriage and she meets this guy and he liberates her you know yeah and they run off together and it was such a lovely part. <laughs> That's yeah, amazing. That's yeah, such a good attitude. It's something that I struggle with all the time. I, I can never kind of forgive my younger self for the decision making. I always think I'm always cross with her. I'm cross with her for like allowing a, an FHM shoot to shoot me from the back with some knickers on. Like I'm cross with that girl. And actually you're so right. It, it should be that kind of, you know, I believed in it at the time. I believed I was doing the right thing at the time. And God, I'm never going to look that good again. So, <laughs> so why am I not? April, I'm sorry, but you're gorgeous. Okay. My partner, Omang and I, most of the time, yeah, we, we get onto Instagram and you put up a photo and I'm like, oh my God, April's looking so hot in this picture. <laughs> all right. I you swear to God. put April. the good photos. We only put good ones on Instagram. That's Please, all that, lies. It's not lies. It's not lies. And, but you and, know what I mean. No, yeah, I I know what you mean. But I must say, I must say that whatever it is, I'm really, the reason why I I think I also feel like this is, has a lot to do with the women in my family. 
my mother my aunt and my grandmother have been like the three uh, you know like women who have been supporting me That's yeah cool. and i think that my grandmother has seen my work whether wow. it has been like work where i've been scantily clad work where i've played you know the demi or indian bride uh, and supported me and cheered me on and never ever ever once did she uh, you know say why did you do this debut film about a you know about india's first born soft born writer mm. and uh, why did you do this shot in your bra and why did you do this and that never she always supported me my aunt has always supported me and my mother has always supported me and i think that because of that i don't i i've never looked back and felt you know why did i do this part i know i believed in those parts yeah. and and yeah sometimes when i i do have those days where i'm like shit you know like i i why why are why are like 90% of the pictures that come up on google when somebody googles me you know photos of me in you know in a bikini or whatever yeah. i don't even look like that anymore you know yeah yeah like i have stamp on my body now <laughs> like, uh-huh. what do i do <laughs> but, but you know what to do i yeah. don't know like at yeah. some point i think i'm saying this now honestly april the truth is i'm saying this right now but i agonize about my weight and my body for 90% of my day that's the truth same yeah same. like I, every 2 minutes i'll go to my partner and be like listen do you think i should try this diet listen do you think i should try this workout listen you know i'm just putting on weight listen you know? yeah because do you feel like that's because people see you as this like sexy young thing and you always need to stay like that because if they because i i mean i'm trying not to now but i do think being associated with somebody who is uh who is primarily a tool for what they look like it does get in your head and i think also maybe that's just part of being in the entertainment industry in general but i yeah. is that the same for for the indian <clears throat> film industry too oh yeah like i feel like you know when i was growing up like if if you just take it from the my my childhood till now like the average indian woman women had like their hips were this much and now their hips are like yeah. you know this small and and i just don't think it's a indian film industry i think that it's everywhere yeah this portrayal of this unimaginably fit skinny hot woman but, young but it's the, woman but honestly. it's the, that i mean you know i don't want to be like either end of the spectrum here it's that there is an ideal like there are people who are naturally slim and naturally larger and you know there it's the fact that we're all existing on this scale but yeah. it's it's the depiction is of one type only and this is yes. what's beautiful this is yes. this is what's beautiful and if you're down that end then you're not okay and if you're up that end then you're also not okay that's the yeah. problem yes i completely agree and i think it's sort of um it's way worse in the indian film industry right uh you know um and and i think it's just because industry wise we're catching up you know we're always catching up like now there is so much more like over here they keep saying bolder content which has come out because of things like netflix and amazon prime coming into our industry and people making web shows where directors have been given the freedom to make you know content that they want to mm-hmm. uh, because of that i think the like even someone like a porama sarkar is is not the regular indian uh, you know heroine or whatever on screen yeah. uh, she's just like any normal girl any normal indian girl yeah. um but um i do think it's changing but we have a long way to go we have a long way to go till mm-hmm. we do have um a normalized depiction of a woman on screen like till very recently you know indian women had a shelf life right uh as a as protagonists in any indian content yeah. and that's changed because you have now uh, married women women with children doing work you have women all all types of women all age groups of women doing work doing main protagonist parts doing beautiful character parts in shows and films and things so things are changing 
and slowly slowly we're getting there but honestly like um the more i see i feel with body image depictions on screen whether it's the western film industry or the indian film industry everywhere there's just a long way to go because yeah people today men and women i don't think there's anyone who doesn't have body image issues i think that's you know? it we're part of it aren't we if we you and i if you and i are spending 90% of our day worrying about our what we look like and saying to our other halves like should i start this diet or maybe it only make me one fish cake tonight because you know i can't possibly have two then maybe we need to accept ourselves and be the kind of pioneers and join the movement that is able to normalize just any old normal body i think that's our responsibility yeah but it's a tough one yeah honestly it's so tough it like, but it's little, yeah i swear like i've grown up constantly worried about you know how fat or thin i am yeah and i i'm i know that my friends are the same the ones who are in the industry and not mm-hmm. there's so much so much focus on one's appearance and weight yeah uh, in this world and yeah. we need to now that we're going through a global pandemic i think people should just be like listen just try and be as healthy as you can and that's mm-hmm. it like that should be the you know i love the fact that jay my husband jamie's just written can we have a mcdonald's tonight <laughs> now that we're having this conversation <laughs> oh <laughs> it's not no jamie don't do it it's not we're not saying about putting on weight we're saying about a, a healthy body type good to say <laughs> Um wait actually this kind of bring, I think I think in my head I've sort of imagined that there's this like magical land of the Indian film industry and then the western film industry and that there's this sort of bridge between the two or maybe lack of a bridge and I think lots of our questions were you know a- around like what would you like to break into a different film industry or would you like to become more famous in Hollywood and I think I I've written the question in a kind of I framed it in a way that I feel makes me f- more comfortable asking you that question yes. as if like my film industry is better than yours which is not how it, it how I mean it to sound at all but I suppose it's that thing of you know do you have an aspiration to be part of the of the kind of Hollywood film industry or are you happy what you know representing the people that you're representing and and being in the the films and the and the TV shows and the things that are being are, are moving forward but may or be it slowly and and i guess how do you feel about either way those decisions that's the worst framed question ever but you know what i'm <laughs> you know what i'm saying basically yeah can can you answer that is that a question yes i can definitely answer that okay great um so it's honestly my dream uh would have been to have gone to rada or london's you know some drama school in england say studied and worked yeah somewhere you know in england and, and then ended up working in the uk film industry okay everything i watch uh, everything i've watched has been uh from the time i was really young even now like my like umang and i my my partner and i we are huge fans of line of duty you know huge fans of uh, david tennant any show he's in we'll watch you know olivia colman i mean um i mean these are just a few but there but but i'm a huge fan of a lot of work that comes out of the uk and um i just think we I just feel really really grateful again for having the opportunity to be part of disconnected mm-hmm. uh and it is something that I hope opens the door opens doors for me in that eventually when this pandemic ends and when possible I can uh you know work in the UK film industry and hollywood and wherever uh possible if you know if i don't want to say if god wills it but yeah if, if god wills it. yeah yeah so yeah i mean that would be amazing uh i love the work that i'm doing here i do i i feel like i've been very very lucky to have met 
like minded filmmakers and people who are trying different things and i've been very lucky that as an indian a female indian actor i've gotten to play parts that are completely different like in every project that i've done i've played a different part i haven't luckily you know just done one particular type of part and i and that is because i never made it you know yeah. I, i never did the big film and got super famous and i i know i probably wanted it's a very weird was, way to put it tara <laughs> <laughs> very strange way to put it no you know why because when you come into the industry when you decide to be an actor you have a certain like trajectory or you have a certain wish or dream in your mind but it's and impossible I'm, Yeah. You don't have any control over that, really. Yeah, but yeah, true, absolutely, but you do feel like okay, fine, you know, um uh you 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 do have like as naive as it is, you do have a wish that I hope that I get yes. an opportunity yes. like, to be, you know, at a certain uh be doing a certain type of film by like I've been in the industry now for 10 years. Yeah. And I have to say April I have to say that as disappointed as I've been with work that I haven't gotten I'm so so grateful for the parts that I have because I look back at my work and feel really really proud uh and really really grateful to have had the opportunity to learn from the filmmakers who I've worked with and yeah. the actors that's such an amazing attitude because so many actors spend and and I'm myself included spend a great deal of time wishing for the next thing wondering what the next thing will be when's but the next I'm, job coming but i'm the same i do have that feeling like uh honestly like i do have that feeling like uh, for for a long time my deepest prayer has been you know may i please like know that okay fine like for the next year or two years i have these jobs lined up yeah and that that time has not come mm -hmm. and and i'm I've learned to live with those months in between where I have no idea what I'm going to be doing next. Yeah. And I think I drive That's it. It's the part of the skill now. is learning to live with the time in between. That's, That's part the, of the skill. I swear to god you said that so well. Uh-huh. That that really is I think that's one of the biggest learnings as an actor. Yeah. You know. And I think everyone's kind live. of had a taste of that during lockdown. At all of the industries that's what we have to do all the time <laughs> yeah exactly so yeah i've got a question from loving skins who is a, a, a has been a long time follower of mine that i didn't even realize was indian um who says they love you so much and so many people by the way have said that they love you so much but what is what kinds of characters are your favorite types of characters to play Honestly I don't think I've I don't think I've worked enough to know what kind of characters are my favorite mm -hmm. but I do know what I want to do what I hope that I get a chance to do okay and uh, I don't think I've ever played like you know a character that's you know like a I don't know a psychopath killer or you know something darker okay I don't know say like this sounds very funny but you know like uh <laughs> Like yeah, but it's, that's uh, part of being an actor is is exploring something that is completely against what you would be na naturally. It's like dropping into somebody's mind and having a go at exploring yeah. what they would be like. Yeah, like I'd love to play, you know, someone who who's mentally unstable in some way. Mm -hmm. I don't think I've ever had the opportunity to play a part like that. I, I know for a fact fun. there'd be filmmakers watching this who are right. Like, okay. I need to write this down right now. I'm going to write you a script right now. I'm going to be going to be basing crazy lady in the UK before you know. Crazy it, I lady. <laughs> I would love to like I'd love to play I don't know something out there. Out there not like out there like that but you know for yeah. me out there. It's the most interesting ultimately. That's why dramas are made about people who are psychos and killers because they they make yeah. great drama. It's I mean a drama about someone who just goes about their normal life. potentially couldn't be maybe isn't that interesting yeah maybe <laughs> i um, think it's very interesting i think that's very interesting as well though no yeah true true like, i've just, just realized look tara it's already we've been talking for nearly an hour already and i really oh, want to wow. make sure i know i could talk to you forever honestly you, you, <laughs> you you've got the most amazing voice i could listen to you talk for ages I just want to make sure that um there's lots of people who've asked questions and obviously I've been asking all the questions so I just wanted to 
open it up to people who have questions for Tara or questions for me. Please ask away. Um, again, if you want to write them in a language that Tara understands that I don't, then make sure you're writing something nice because I will never know and I won't be, I won't be, I won't be able to delete it, which I do. But um, yeah, I, I think when I have a little look, see if there's any um, questions that come up, but also talk to us about what you have coming up. What, what could we see you in next? So um, this is the dreaded question. <laughs> I know, I know. Sometimes people ask me this and I have nothing next and I'm like, yeah, <laughs> what to say? No, no. Um, but I'm, I'm going to go and I'm going to make my dinner and then I'm yeah. like, you know. <laughs> I know yeah. the feeling. Yeah, no, but I'm very lucky uh, because hopefully firstly we'll be doing Disconnected again very soon. You um, never know. You never know. Uh, yeah, you never know. And uh, I'm also doing the second season of uh, the web series Mastra. Wow. So that is starting. But again, we're dependent on uh, COVID because mm -hmm. we are actually, we've been, we, the shoot for that happens in uh, Manali, which is in Himachal Pradesh, which is the north of India. Okay. And uh, to travel there with the entire unit, I mean, it's a small unit, but the thing is that we won't be able to do it until it's safe. So right. right now it's, people have started shooting, but it's still not too safe. So I'm not sure when we're going to head to okay. the mountains. So you, it's the, that's the kind of thing that you can't shoot like disconnected. You can't have a man standing in the corner of a room shooting you like, like this with, on an iPhone. No. <laughs> no. I see. No. Fair enough. Fair enough. Also, it's set in the 80s. So we oh, wow. have to. Yeah, we have right. to be there. Right. Slightly higher budget than Disconnected, it turns out. <laughs> Slightly. <laughs> Slightly. Okay, well, I think I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to have to say goodbye to you, Tara, because otherwise it won't save on my, on my Instagram. So I may, if I can ask you possibly, if you haven't had your question answered, because the likelihood is you haven't, because I haven't really asked any. Um, can Tara, would you mind answering people's questions if I post this video to my Not page? at all. Okay. Not so if all. you've got any more questions for Tara or you want to like say anything, how much you love her, because I know most of the comments have been how much people love you, please do leave a comment below this video and um, hopefully if Tara doesn't mind, she'll be answering them shortly. Thank you very much, my love, for being, uh, for being here Thank in Brighton. Thank you. And I really, really hope that we get to meet you and Jamie in person very soon. I know. I said to you before, I've, told, I've said if, I, if I'm coming to India, I've got to bring my dad because uh, yes. that's, he definitely wants to come. So you, you never know. If we're allowed to travel, we would love to come and see you. For real. In real life. You have to. I'm so Bye, excited. Tara. Lots Bye. of love. Lots Bye. Of love. Oh God, look how red I am. I'm so excited. God, I literally could have talked to her forever. What an amazing, amazing woman. Guys, we are so lucky that we've just had, I mean, A, it's now like five to midnight in India and she stayed up and she talked to us. God, right, I better wrap this up quick. Otherwise we won't be able to save it and you won't be able to answer your questions. Ask the questions. I can give you a little spoiler about next week. So I've got amazing, another amazing woman on my show next week. I am very, very excited to talk to her. She is Scottish and she also is best known for a character who debuted on E4. If you get that, then that's, that's pretty impressive, I'll be honest. Um, as always, DM me, ask me, uh, ask me anything about the show, ask me to get in touch with some guests. I've only got three more episodes, one of which will be somebody from Skins. I know everyone's asking, but obviously this show is more about talking to all actors and all creatives about being recognised and confused even with one character. So on that note, I'll see you next week. Ready for another interview. And uh, have a good week, everybody. Good night. <laughs>